Ouch! Ah, oh, there's hardly a person who's never been stung by a bee. It's definitely not a pleasant feeling. But bees aren't normally angry creatures. You probably just scared the little guy. These insects are super important for pollination. Their existence is one of the main reasons why our plants keep growing. Bees only sting when they feel threatened. If you get stung, it might mean you've come too close to them. Or, more importantly, that you've come too close to their hive. Each hive can hold between 50,000 to 80,000 honeybees. Just like us humans, bees do everything to protect their home. But instead of alarms and complicated security systems, they use their stingers to ward off enemies. When honeybees sting, they release something called a pheromone. Pheromones are chemical substances that affect the behavior of animals of the same species. If one bee charges at you, the pheromones are likely to stir up all nearby bees, and they will readily join in. That's one meeting you'll definitely want to avoid. Here's a fun fact. It's only female bees that can sting. Larger male drone bees don't even have stingers. This is because the stinger is basically a modified egg-laying device. Queen bees also have stingers. These bees are bigger than the average worker. The queen has an average size of just under one inch. It's about twice the size of your regular worker bee. Because of its large size, many people think that the queen bee's sting hurts the most. So let's dive into it. First of all, queen bees rarely sting because of their job in the hive. The queen is the most important bee in the colony, as it's the only female that can reproduce. The queen has two main jobs in the hive. Number one, she produces chemical scents that help unify the rest of the bees so they can work together. Number two, she lays a lot of eggs, up to 2,000 a day. The queen is surrounded by worker bees who meet her every need at all times. They give her food. The attendant workers also collect and then distribute the queen's pheromones, which stops the workers from finding a new queen. But despite being the head of the hive and being much bigger than other bees, the queen's sting is actually the least painful. This is because regular bees have barbed stingers. This means that when they attack, the stinger gets stuck in your skin, making it really difficult to remove. The stinger also contains nasty venom that's packed with proteins. That's what causes the pain and affects your immune system and skin cells. The stinger continues to pump venom into your body for more than 10 minutes or until it gets removed. But unlike workers, queen bees leave the hive very rarely. Their main job is to lay eggs, and it's down to the rest of the colony to protect the hive and the queen. That's why worker bees are the ones with the most powerful sting. This is how they can ward off potential dangers. The only reason the queen would really need to defend herself is against rival queens. Because of this, the queen has no need to develop a nasty stinger. Hers is instead a lot smoother. This means that the barbs don't get stuck in your skin, which can be mega uncomfortable. While this might sound good, it does come with a bit of bad news. Because of the smoothness of its stinger, the queen can jab you multiple times. The stinger is attached to the bee's digestive tract, nerves, and muscles, all of which are essential for the bee to function normally. When workers sting, they're unable to pull their stinger out because of the barbs. And when they try to get free, it doesn't end well for them. But the queen stinger doesn't get stuck. That's why the bee doesn't feel any negative consequences. And still, she'll basically only sting you if she doesn't have one of her bodyguards nearby, which is highly unlikely. So what's the worst place to be stung by a bee? A man called Michael Smith decided to find out. He got stung on 25 different body parts and rated each prick on a pain scale between 1 and 10. He found out that the most tender area was the nostrils, scoring a 9 out of 10, followed by the upper lip, which he estimated as an 8.7. The three least painful locations were the skull, middle toe tip, and upper arm. All of these scored a 2.3. But moving back to the queen, how does a regular bee gain this title? The queen bee rarely needs replacing, as she can live for a whopping five years. At the same time, a worker bee born in the summer usually only survives for about six weeks. But if the queen passes away or moves to another hive, the colony needs to replace her. Doing this requires something called royal jelly, 
which nurse bees produce in their heads. They feed it to newly hatched honeybee larvae. It's basically a superfood that contains loads of useful stuff, including vitamin B, proteins, hormones, and sugars. After feeding baby bees for three days, workers select just a few larvae and continue giving them the royal jelly. The others will have a less nutritional diet. The royal jelly triggers new phases of development for these growing bees. And one of the most important is growing special organs they need to lay eggs. But people still don't fully understand how this process works. Some scientists say that it's not the royal jelly itself that causes a bee to turn into a queen. They think it's the exclusion of other natural plant-based chemicals from the queen's diet. But even though we aren't 100% sure how these special bees appear, we do know why there's just one queen in the end. When the first queen emerges, she searches for the other bees who've been fed the same royal jelly. And then she wipes out the competition. If several queens emerge at the same time, it's time to grab your popcorn. They'll hunger games it out in a dramatic fight until only one remains. And that's how bees get their queen. Other bees in the hive also have important jobs. These include foraging for food, tending to young larvae, and building a honeycomb. Drones, or male bees, have one singular job. They mate with the queen. And when they're not trying to mate, they eat from honey reserves and do pretty much nothing. Female bees, or worker bees, do everything else. They keep the hive clean, take care of larvae, tend to the queen, store honey, build cells, forage, guard the nest, pollinate, and even feed male bees. Each bee knows exactly what job to do. That's because their specific hormones activate parts of their genetic makeup that tell them what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. Bees have four job phases in their lifetime. Phase one starts about three weeks after they get born. That's when they get to work cleaning the cells from which they've emerged. Three days later, they enter phase two. In this phase, they're in charge of feeding other bees. This lasts for about a week. Then they enter phase three. They move further away from the hive center and become handy helpers. They build the honeycomb and guard the hive's entrance. This period also lasts for around a week. After that, they enter the fourth and final phase, the foraging stage. It's definitely the most dangerous part of our stripy friends' lives. This is where they leave the nest, look for pollen, bring it home, and feed the colony. They also leave a stinky footprint on the flowers they touch when collecting pollen. This way, they can figure out if their bee relatives have been here or if it's been a stranger. Sometimes they discover their own footprints. <laughs> Unbelievable! This phase doesn't last very long though, only around 10 days, as it makes bees super tired. After such a short life, where they work non-stop, worker bees then leave the hive to never return. At the same time, if a worker passes away inside the hive, special undertaker bees carry this bee out. But while bees' lives may be short, this pattern seems to be working out quite well for the species. After all, they've been around for over a whopping 130 million years and counting. When you first see this creature, it may seem to you that this is a flying sapphire. The blue banded bee is as beautiful as this gem. These flying beetles have turquoise stripes instead of yellow. Their huge green eyes resemble emeralds. And their thin brown wings look like layers of cellophane with engraved patterns. Appearance is not the only thing that distinguishes them from ordinary bees. The blue banded ones are singles. They don't move in swarms and don't live in large nests. These beetles like settling in small burrows in the soil or crevices in rocks. Another cool difference between our blue guys and ordinary bees is their unique way of pollination. Scientists call it buzz pollination. The blue bee sits on the flower, holds it tightly, and begins to shake the whole body. It creates a series of small, fast vibrations. This way, the bee also shakes the flower quickly and gently. These movements make the pollen move out of the anther. Then the bee stops and collects all this pollen. Some scientists think these bees prefer pollinating purple flowers. This helps the blue bees blend in with the plant and remain unnoticed by enemies. But this theory hasn't been proved yet. 
The blue-banded bees mainly inhabit the territory of Australia. They are an important element in the agriculture of this country. These bees work with tomatoes, cranberries, eggplants, blueberries, kiwi, and chili peppers. Ordinary bees can't pollinate most of those plants, but their blue relatives can. On a global scale, more than 8% of plants in the world need to be pollinated through buzz pollination. That's why farmers love and protect blue-banded bees so much. Wasps and bees are very similar in appearance. Sometimes they can be difficult to tell apart, but their lifestyle is totally different. Bees are quiet beetles that spend all their time pollinating plants, collecting nectar from flowers, and making honey. We can say that bees are small, powerful trucks, but wasps are racing supercars. They are more aggressive, much faster, and more maneuverable in the air. Their stings are more painful. Yes, they can also carry pollen from one plant to another and feed on nectar, but their main mission is to control the population of insect pests, such as aphids and some species of caterpillars. According to some estimates, wasps managed to get rid of more than 14,000 tons of insects in the UK alone during one summer. Imagine how much they do all over the world. Wasps are dangerous beetles, but among them, there is one kind that is distinguished by its peaceful nature and lifestyle. This is the mud dauber wasp. It also has a black and yellow coloring, but it looks more elegant. A swarm of regular wasps is controlled by the queen, but mud daubers are solitary creatures. They build a small nest of mud in which they live with their children. A mud dauber will bite only if it's in danger. Unlike other wasps, these insects only use their venom to paralyze spiders, flies, and caterpillars. Then they bring them to their nest to feed their children. So don't be surprised if you see a large horde of paralyzed spiders inside the nest. There can be more than 500 bugs in one nest. When little wasps hatch from eggs, they immediately begin their feast. The most unfriendly wasp species is the hornet. They are also wasps, but bigger, angrier, and with an even more painful bite. Its bite is one of the most dangerous among all insects. This critter can grow to be the size of a thumb. That's three times as large as a regular bee. Hornets attack in a huge swarm and pose a great danger to any animal. To fight them, people wear thick protective suits that resemble space suits. But the worst thing is that hornets invade hives and reduce the bee population. This can lead to a catastrophe on a planetary scale. Since bees pollinate more than half of all fruits, vegetables, grains, and nuts in the world. Look at this big buzzing bumblebee. There's something wrong with it. It lands on a flower. And wait a minute. This is not a bumblebee at all. It's some kind of green, orange, beautiful beetle. Oh, now it takes off and looks like a bumblebee again. Meet the pellucid hawk moth. Thanks to its color and transparent wings, it creates the illusion of a bumblebee. The wings of most insects serve for thermoregulation. They warm their body. Other insects have wings that help them fight enemies. A butterfly manages to look like a large creature thanks to the pattern on its wings. Some insects communicate using vibrations created by their wings. Colored wings have many different purposes, but the pellucid hawk moth has transparent wings. And their main function is to avoid reflecting sunlight. These fast-moving transparent wings practically don't shine in the light and tone down the color of the beetle. Thanks to this, when the moth is flying, other insects perceive it as a bumblebee and are afraid to attack it. These bumblebee copycats are found in Africa, India, Southeast Asia, and Australia. At the beginning of life, they are bright green caterpillars that feed on coffee and pomegranate leaves. From afar, it may seem that a hamster is sitting on the trunk of a tree, but this is actually the southern flannel moth. It's large and covered with thick fur. Don't try and pet it if you don't want to go to a hospital. There are many poisonous thorns hidden inside this fur coat. Even a light prick can make you experience lots of unpleasant sensations. Other insects that pretend to be bees and wasps are hoverflies. They look like wasps, fly like wasps, and imitate a wasp's sting. But their coolest ability is copying bee buzzing. In reality though, hoverflies are fragile, harmless creatures. Their ability to transform into bees is essential for their survival. And it works great. 
Many animals and insects are afraid to approach these skillful actors. But in the entire animal world, lyre birds get the title of the most talented imitators. These small birds, with large, beautiful tails resembling a lyre, live in Australia. Imagine getting lost in a forest far away from a big city. Suddenly, you hear the sound of a chainsaw. You don't see people, but the sound is getting closer. Then you hear the clicking of a camera shutter. But there are no people with cameras around. Lyre birds create all these sounds. Thanks to all the complex muscles of their syrinx, they can mimic the sound of almost anything. Some people heard these birds imitating human speech. Also, they are good forest designers. Female lyre birds build domed nests on the ground, in stumps and caves. They usually lay one egg there and take care of the baby for the first six to ten weeks. Let's go down from the sky to the ocean to see other tiny creatures. Meet Blue Ringed Octopus. This little guy looks so small and cute. Its bright neon color and blue rings are visible from afar. The octopus can easily fit in your palm, but it's better not to touch it. Meeting a great white shark may not be as dangerous as encountering this tiny creature. It's one of the most treacherous sea inhabitants in the world because of its venom. One bite can knock down a huge African elephant. The octopus is much more dangerous than a king cobra or a black widow spider because its bite often goes unnoticed. You may not feel or see when it stings you, and when you realize that something is wrong, it may be too late. Also, there's no antidote to the blue ringed octopus's venom. The creature's salivary glands are home to bacteria that produce this venom. The same substance is found in the venom of pufferfish. When it enters the human body, it paralyzes the entire nervous system. The lungs stop contracting to supply the body with oxygen. The only good news is that this octopus is unlikely to attack first. The last recorded case when this creature charged at people was in the 60s. The blue ringed octopus lives in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, from the coast of Japan to Australia. They spend most of their time in tide pools and coral reefs. Now we move to the hot sands of the southeastern U.S. states. You can find fire ants here. Outwardly, they don't differ much from regular bugs. But people call them fire ants because of their bite. Their poison resembles a flame. You're likely to feel the bite site burning. Therefore, it's better not to touch them and go away before any of these ants crawl into your pants. Now, it's obvious who can win a fight between a bee and a giant hornet. It's like a battle between a kitten and a saber-toothed tiger. And an army of bees against an army of hornets is like hundreds of kittens against hundreds of lions. It seems the hornets will win because one hornet can destroy more than 1,000 bees in less than an hour and a half. But if this battle happens in real life, it will be more complicated, dramatic, and unexpected than you can imagine. A group of bees works all day. They pollinate plants and fruits and collect nectar from flowers. They work hard and return home to the hive at the end of the day. They don't notice an imposter flying among them, a giant hornet. It's bigger than one bee, but has the same yellow-black color. No one pays any attention to it. The imposter enters the bee house without an invitation and makes a crackling sound. That's how its jaws snap. Hungry and angry, it begins the feast. In a matter of seconds, the hornet puts the hive into chaos. The hornet has a sting with toxic venom, but it can go without it here. For bees, the monster uses its sharp jaws. The hive citizens attack the enemy, but it doesn't feel a thing. The situation is getting worse because bees can't live after using their sting. They sacrifice their lives to protect their home, to protect the queen. Unfortunately, all their attempts are in vain. After quenching its thirst, the hornet flies away to find new prey. Only one bee manages to survive. It escapes from the hive to warn the others. The bee visits every hive in the valley and reports the powerful enemy. All bees start preparing to attack. They're raising an army. Unfortunately, this is not enough. The giant hornet visits a new hive, but this time, bees are ready. They attack the enemy from all sides. For a moment, it seems bee stings are working. The hornet is weakening, its activity is falling. The hope of victory inspires bees with confidence, but not for long. At this moment, 10 other hornets fly into the hive. The first hornet marked the hive with a unique pheromone before the battle. This smell attracted its friends. 
and now the bees have no chance. In the wild, hornets leave the trace so others can find the tagged location. In a few minutes, 11 hornets destroy the hive of 25,000 bees. Recently, this sunny land was blooming thanks to bees. Now it has turned into a lifeless valley. Giant hornets don't want to spend time searching for hives, so they divide into groups and fly to different sides of the valley. They mark bee houses with a pheromone and start a large-scale cleanup. Their hunger and thirst for destruction are insatiable. Yeah, bees now know their enemy and notice it as soon as a hornet appears in the air, but it doesn't help. In each battle, they use a lot of strategies to fight it. Once bees tried to attack a hornet hive, but it was a pointless mission. No one pollinates flowers anymore. No one makes honey. Bees live in fear and are afraid to fly out of their hives. In this dark hour, when almost no hopes left, a slight chance of victory appears. A species of Japanese bees learned to defeat the enemy. The news spread all over the hives. The strategy seems to be working. They've managed to fight off several giant hornets. The fear goes away, and the bees are ready to fight again. In the real world, these bees learn to fight giant hornets. But other species can't do that. So bees are waiting for the enemy. They all know what to do. Finally, a giant hornet appears. Hundreds of bees attack it and wrap it with their bodies from all sides. They completely cover the hornet and start to tremble. The simultaneous vibration of all the bees heats up the enemy. The temperature is getting higher. The hornet can't get out. Bees seem to burn it with the energy of their bodies. A few minutes later, the giant hornet falls. Bees throw it out of the hive. Now they are confident of their victory. Another hornet arrives. Tired bees attack it and start to vibrate again. The next monster is coming, and another one. 10, 20, 100 hornets arrive. Bees don't have so many resources and energy. The chances to win are zero again. To win once and for all, the bees must unite. All the hives, hundreds of millions of bees. A huge, lifeless meadow is the location for the final battle. All the bees of the valley flock here. They are ready for the last fight. Silence ensues. Then, the air begins to vibrate. You can hear the buzzing of hornets from afar. They have increased their population hundreds of times because none of the animals can resist them. The defeat of bees is inevitable. But no one is going to back down. Two swarms collide with each other. This is not a battle. This is destruction. Hundreds of thousands of bees, but zero hornets, fall to the ground in a few minutes. A whole species of insects are disappearing from the planet. But what is it? The field plugs into a strange fog. Bees and hornets don't see each other. Then, through the white veil, they appear. Silhouettes of giant creatures. They come into the middle of the action. Thousands of hornets attack them, but it's all pointless. Bees quickly fall down and lose consciousness. The hornets pass out too. Some are trying to fly away, but the fog doesn't let them. All insects fall asleep. Someone used gas to stop this fight. And this someone is the bee's main ally. A human has come into the game. In thick protective suits, people picked up euthanized hornets from the ground. They put them in one basket and the bees in another. The collection of insects lasts for several hours. Then the bees wake up in their hives unharmed. Hornets wake up in special containers. They're trapped, and now they can't hurt anyone. People are destroying hornets' nests all over the world. They won't allow them to multiply. Bees are responsible for the cycle of life in nature. They help many plants to reproduce, thanks to pollination. Bees serve as berries and fruits we eat. They take care of flowers that cows and other livestock feed on. Thanks to bees, we grow a lot of cotton. If the hornets destroy them, there will be a shortage of clothes made of this material. T-shirts, jeans, jackets, all this will be more expensive and then will disappear from the markets. Many products will lose their rich taste and useful properties. Animals and people won't get enough vitamins. Cows won't produce milk. There will be no cheese, sour cream, butter, and other food. You won't be able to order a juicy burger at the restaurant. 
eggplants, hot peppers, kiwi, blueberries, cranberries, and much more will disappear from the counter. Whole species of animals and plants will stop existing. This will lead to other crises, not only in agriculture, but also in the global economy. Meanwhile, the number of hornets will be growing. There are almost no animals in the world to control them. If people don't do anything, everyone will have to wear thick protective suits to walk outside. Hornets will get into houses and cars, attack people and pets. One giant hornet can cause a lot of trouble. Its sting is one of the most dangerous and painful among all other insects. It's like a red-hot needle. When a hornet sticks it into an opponent, it injects the poison into the skin. This toxin dilates the walls of blood vessels. The area around the bite turns red. This can last for several hours or even days. The hornet is an aggressive creature. It can sting several times. Imagine what a group of these insects can do. To escape, you need to hide in bushes with dense foliage or jump into the water. After the hornets fly away, urgently contact the hospital. Hornets can make people's lives worse. It's important to fight them. Unfortunately, bees can't do this. They're absolutely defenseless. Humanity is aware of this danger and does everything to control the hornet's population. That's why giant hornets have no chances in this fight. Now, every bee returns to its usual way of life. Pollination, nectar extraction, honey production in hives. The valley is blooming again. Bees can sleep peacefully. People monitor the situation and watch for giant hornets. If one enemy appears, it means there's a nest somewhere. Special services track down the insects and find nests under old trees and in pits.